chain mail. Hey, we are going to try something different today. We're going to be using the fantasy supplement. These optional rules add elements of the fantastical to your elements on the army. We're only going to be using a few of these because I want to ease into it as we usually do. Today we are going to have a battle that pits the orcs against the human empire, and I've decided just to keep it simple, I'm just going to refer to the uh, humans as the Bro-Man Empire. Let's start with the orcs. The guy here in front, this is Mighty Mac. That is Murray the Giant, and the orcs have brought him in to try and uh, balance their forces out a little bit. Now, in the rules, Gary Gygax assigns them a point cost of 50 points. Giants attack as 12 heavy foot. They defend as 12 armored foot. Now, given that, I would expect, you know, uh, call it four and a half points. Oh, they also have 12 hit points. And until you do 12 hit points, they continue to roll those 12 dice. Oh, by the way, they get an extra die on the attack. And oh, by the way, they never check morale. If you bought a unit of, eh, call it 12 heavy foot, that would cost you 48 points. Or you can get this guy for 50 points, just two points more, and... Every wound that the heavy foot, this is a unit of heavy foot back here, every wound a unit of heavy foot takes is one less die they get to roll. This bad boy rolls 12 dice until he dies. Not only that, but he acts as a mobile catapult. On any given turn, he can throw a boulder 10 inches instead of moving. Remember, catapults in this game, if you move, you can't fire in the following turn. You have to spend a full time setting up, and then you can fire on subsequent turns. This guy can move or fire every turn. Doesn't take a turn to reload. Pretty impressive. 50 points, kind of grossly undervalued. But what are you going to do? Uh, he acts as a small catapult, range of 10 inches, given that we're doing the half point. So that's that's the special for the orcs. Now, the orcs have special rules where they're very cheap, but there's a very good chance that they're going to uh, attack each other. They also have a minus one to their morale in daytime. Uh, you know, we're going to call it dusk, and we're not going to, and these guys are all from the same clan. We're, I, I've pointed them out the exact same points as humans. So if you wanted to use orcs, you can buy them crazy cheap, but you got to keep them away from each other because there's a chance that they attack each other if you're taking the reduced points, which I'm not. So if we look at these other units, we've got a unit of five heavy horse. That's these charioteers and the general there. And then behind them, we've got a unit of large wolves who will move and fight as light horse. And then finally, way in the back there, you've got a unit of five Heavy foot, not armored, heavy foot. Now, bear in mind, each of these stands represents four figures. We're going to be using wound counters. And, of course, Mighty Mac up there in the front. He, I'm not going to put 12 wound counters on him. I'll just keep score somewhere else or maybe drop a D12 down. So let's go take a look at the Broman Empire, who has some special abilities of their own. The guys you're looking at in the front in the blue are the elvish allies that the Broman Empire has brought in for this battle. The modern conception of faction play is, it includes the conceit that elves are their own faction in their own right, and that they have multiple different kinds of troops. They have spearmen, they have they have archers obviously they have their own cavalry they have their own you know if you're if you're talking about old g dubs they'll have you know griffin riders and wizards and um what was it like organ guns and all kinds of fun stuff like that in chainmail elves are merely elves we're, we're all the way back to race as class in this case and the way elves work in chainmail so, in, in this particular battle, I'm going to use the elves as written in the fantasy supplement. What does that mean? Well, I'm not too sure, because Gary doesn't tell us how they attack. Are they light foot? Armored foot? Heavy foot? He doesn't say. What he does say is that they can go invisible, and they can attack on the same turn that they are invisible, but once they attack, they're visible. All right, so what does that mean? Well, they can't be meleeed, they can't be charged until they make contact, which is a little bit tricky because they have the ability to fire arrows and they can split fire and move, which means they can move halfway, shoot with their bows, and then take another half move. Hmm, well, that's interesting. We're going to look at what that means here moving forward. Meanwhile, they get to add two dice to the combat tables when they fight orcs because they hate orcs so much. And uh, what I think that's it. 
they would add three dice against goblins, and there's something about the archers. Nope, but they have a morale of six, and they have a point value of four, so they cost as much as this unit of heavy foot right here. I've got 16 heavy foot, four bases for the Broman Empire, I've, and these guys have pikes. The light foot also have pikes. So here's your peasantry, and here's your... See the difference between the light and the heavy? The light are spread out a little bit more. The heavy are just one massive block. And uh, so the elves cost as much as these guys. So that's 48 points of elves. It's 48 points worth of heavy infantry with pikes and 32 points of light infantry with pikes. And then, of course, they are backed up, as always, by lots of heavy horse. A lot of knights there. Six full stands. 24 horses, 120 points. We're looking at a 248-point battle for this one, and I'm just going to line them up and throw them at each other. We have a lovely battlefield set up. I have some new stream terrain to show you. Just simple popsicle sticks. I just notched out a little bit right there so I can make nice little twisty streams. The stream is uncrossable except for the pieces that have... In fact, I'm going to move this guy over just a little bit more. The pieces that have a ford, you can cross the entire piece. There's a ford here, and there's a ford here. So we could technically remove this, except it'll look so much better if you have a stream that goes from full side to full side. As you can see, we have a couple of woods along the stream, and then one lone hill out here. I'm going to turn that 90 degrees just to give you a choice. It's going to direct traffic one way or the other. Remember that extra, it takes extra energy, extra fatigue to move up and down the hill. The question is going to be who's coming on where... And as always, in order to keep this as fair as possible, I will nominate a side. We're going to nominate the Broman Empire, and they're going to come in on a one, two, three. Nope, I always roll a D8. And we're going to roll at one o'clock, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight will be on the northern side. With a result of a six, they're going to come on one, two, three, four, five, six. So the Broman Empire is coming in from the west, and the orcs are coming in from the east. And away we go. Over here on the side of the Broman Empire, we've got our light foot with pikes, heavy foot holding the center. Then our archers are going to sneak up along here, maybe hoping to get into the woods. Remember, they're invisible. They can fire in and out of the woods, but not through. And then the heavy horse are going to charge right across that ford and try to take out Murray Mac the giant. For their part, the orcs have opted to put their light horse in the southern flank, their heavy horse are going to sweep around this way. As you can see, the giant is up here in the corner, and then he is backed up by the heavy foot in the far north. The question becomes, who is going to get initiative on this very important first turn of the game? I'm going to use the green die for the orcs and the red die for the bromans. Let's call that a six versus five. The broman empire says we want to go first. And just like that, our battle lines have drawn closer together. Everybody advanced up. The one little wrinkle here is that the heavy horse of the Broman Empire has opted to forego that left flank and come straight at their opposing heavy horse. They have the advantage of numbers there, and they're backed up by their heavy infantry. Here's a question for you. My cheat sheet shows me that heavy foot moves at four and a half inches. Armored foot moves at three inches. Well, Murray over there melees as... What does he melee as? Heavy foot, but he defends his armored foot. So how fast does he move? Since he melees as heavy foot, I'm going to move him at the same speed as heavy foot. In other words, he's going to be able to move that four and a half inches. He did move this turn. So he picks up the fatigue marker. Everybody's got one. And the, uh, I, I think that's it. We're ready for turn number two. And once again, the Broman Empire has the advantage here. So we'll pause it, move our boys, and be right back. The Bromans opted to allow the orcs to go first. A little bit of a game of chicken here. And the orcs said, you know what? I'm not moving any of my mounted guys. I want to rest them this turn. So our fatigue markers go away because they did not get meleeed. Meantime, they brought their heavy foot up. They're going to start swinging up to chase these guys off. They may need to get around into the backfield if they can. In response, the Romans decided to bring up their foot troops. So we're sitting on two. 
fatigue for each of those. But their heavy hitters have opted to rest. They're not going to be the only jerks exhausted when they finally get to battle. And we're done with turn number two. Remember that the archers have a 45 degree fire arc and seven and a half inches is somewhere around here. We're not going to pre-measure. We'll wait until they're ready to shoot. But they're pretty much comfortable. They're, they're done moving. And finally, the orcs get the first go around, which means light horse absolutely going to charge the light foot. They're going to have to squeeze in and like so. The heavy horse are also going to charge these heavy foot. And remember that heavy horse have a charge range of... Just double check to make sure. Heavy horse, nine inches. So there's six to there. And then three more inches is... Oh my lord, it's going to bring them up just short. Those impetuous orcs, remember we saw this last time. They are going to be in a little bit of trouble, aren't they? Because they're not going to be able to charge on the next turn. So things get interesting now. Meanwhile, we're going to bring... Now, this is a single figure. Not four figures. So he can move, we decided, four and a half inches. Do, do we want to move him up? I kind of think maybe Murray sees how dumb these guys are. He is not exposed to any bow fire yet. But let's So let's go ahead and bring him up to right about here. Remember, he's got a longer range. Now, he's moved, so he can't chuck any rocks this turn. I'll give him his third fatigue marker, and then we'll force these archers to have to deal with the choice of who they want to shoot at. The orcs have now gone. We'll throw a third fatigue marker down on these heavy. Oh, remember the, the, the elves are invisible. They haven't fired yet, so until they do fire... I guess, what does that mean? They can't be charged? Well, we need to figure that out right now because the question becomes, do we want these guys to move up and charge there? Do we bring these guys counter-charging? Uh, I think as the bromans, I think the smart play is to say, no, you know what we're going to do? We're just going to go ahead and end the turn. These guys aren't melee. They are moving. Well, I shouldn't say that because we are going to go ahead and open fire with the archers. Do we target the... I think we target the giant. I think that's the smart play here. Now, not moving, not meleeing means we take away these fatigue markers. But on the other hand, these archers, as archers, only have a range of seven and a half inches. So maybe the thing to do is do some damage to these guys. They're going to be out of the fight until they can wing all the way around, and they're going to be tired by the time they get there. So maybe we do a little bit of damage, you know, kind of sacrifice these guys a little bit. They're going to fight as one class higher because they're in the woods. Uh, the drilled troops are going to fight as, uh, what do we, how do we, do? I'll have to look that up and see what, what woods do. Um, but I think we're done with all of the moving. And remember our turn order is uh, artillery and missile, and then we do melee. So if we want to, if we want to melee, if we want to shoot missiles, we got to decide right now. I think we do. We got 12 shots with archers uh, on, and that's six inches. So let's just let's just see. Six. That's six inches. Uh, would have been tight. Inch and a half. They would have just been able to hit that giant. Archers, 12 of them, shooting at heavy foot, are going to do. Uh, we got 12 of them. So against half shield, they're going to do three for the first 10 and zero for the second. So they will do three wounds right off the bat. Uh, that is the shot because they did not move. Then they're going to fire at these heavy foot during the missile fire phase. So that's going to be three more, which technically will be one, two, three. And we're just going to pull them off the side like that. And then we'll pick up the unit that, that fell off the face of the earth there. So that's it. Man, doing six six each time, that's pretty that's pretty bonkers, man. Those archers are dangerous. They're going to have to close. That is the end of the turn. Is it? No, that's not the end of the turn. That's the end of movement. we got to do this melee down here. Bear in mind, oh, you know, I should have measured exactly how far these guys charged. I knew they were within charge distance. Let's call it eight. 
let's call it seven and a half. They were seven and a half inches away because that means that this light horse has an additional seven and a half inches of charge after we resolve whether this light foot has the guts to stick around and face that charge. To stick around, they have to roll an eight or better. Light foot resisting light cavalry need an eight. They get a six, so they do not, which means this light foot turns tail and runs, and they are going to run their full move of four and a half inches, which means the light horse are going to be able to catch them. They have enough movement left over. Not only that, but because the light foot have turned tail, they're not going to get a chance to counterattack. It's going to be a total of 16 dice on the part of the orcish wolves. I call them orcs, but they are, they are intelligent wolves who fight as light horse. They're going to get a free set of attacks, and they are going to hit on five up. So the first eight, uh, light horse on light foot, roll two dice per figure in contact. Eight figures in contact. Each get to roll two dice, hitting on fives. They get two casualties right off the bat. And then... Oh, bear in mind, these guys charge, so they are fatigued. They get another two casualties after that. So we'll remove one of the bases of the Bromans. And they are not quite yet to their instability due to excess casualties check. Almost there, but not quite. But now we have to look at the differential here, right? The morale differential, because we did fight a round of combat. The orcs are going to get with their they're going to get a bonus of 4 times 3. That is a bonus of 12. In addition to that, they have eight more figures than the surviving, so they're going to have a bonus of 20 on this. And then you have to compare the morale scores. And for every matched pair that you see, it's going to be where's my morale chart? Here we go. Uh light foot have a morale factor of four. So they're, the Bromans' total score for this is going to be 48. 48 is four times 12. The Lightfoot have a score, let's see, the Light Cavalry, I should say. Where's the Light Horse? Peasant, Levy, Heavy Foot, where's Light Horse? Six, okay. So that's going to be a total of 20. That's 120. Plus our bonus of 12, plus the bonus of 8, that's 140 to 48, means the differential is over 90, which is route one and a half moves with your back to the enemy. Now, one and a half moves for these guys, let's slide on over, you can see, that's going to be four and a half, brings them to here, and then another two and a half is going to take them off the table. The light horse have now successfully pursued them an additional three inches. They're going to wind up here, and now they're very tired. Well, actually, they're not that tired, right? They get one extra fatigue because they fought a, a melee, but they've only got two fatigue, and they have successfully chased off the Broman Lightfoot. Those pikes didn't do them a whole lot of good, did they? And now we really are done. Remember Murray over here? is not going to be able to huck a boulder because he moved. So we're ready for the next turn. We'll grab our dice and see who rolls initiative. Now, wait a minute. These guys charged. They should have a fatigue marker for having charged. And they moved and charged. There we go. Now we're ready for initiative for the next turn. We get a tie, so we'll re-roll. And the Broman Empire gets to go first. And they say, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to... Do we want to pull these guys back and charge with these guys? Well, the first thing we're going to do is not shoot with these archers. They are going to do an additional three casualties to this unit over here. That is two casualties for this unit. And then one more there. So that does trigger an instability due to excess casualties check. The Orcish Heavy Foot have a morale score of... Heavy Foot, morale factor... Where is it? Uh, instability, Heavy Foot, 
They have to roll a seven. No, wait, if have they lost a third of their figures? They started with twenty. They have lost seven. That's more than a third. So we roll, and on a seven up, they stick around. On an eight, they're okay. Now they will fight until they lose another third of their figures. When they are down to just six figures, they will quit the battlefield. But they have survived to fight another day, and these guys have fired. Uh, do we want to race? Now, these guys, um, they charged last turn, so they count as having moved. And what we're going to do is we're going to change formation. That costs half a move. And then we're going to close up like so. And that's going to allow... So that is one fatigue. And that's going to allow these guys to charge as well. The human heavy horse can charge a total of nine inches. They are only six inches away. So, again, this is important. We have to remember. And not only that, but they're going to go ahead and change formation. They're going to extend their line, which costs horse. Now, most people, that would cost them... Uh, let's see. They're not column line. They're just widening. So we're going to call that a... If we call it a quarter move for those guys, half a move, but we'll call it a quarter... Because they are horses, cavalry, reduce the penalties by half. So that is what it's going to look like. Now, they've charged, so they are in their fatigue marker. And the Broman Empire is done, but they have a problem. Because these light horse are going to wheel about 90 degrees. That costs horse a quarter move. That left face is a half a move normally. Quarter move for them. They move 12 inches normally. That only costs them 3 inches. They're going to be able to move 6 to here. And then wheel about like so. And here's the value. And they're going to extend their line for that extra. Now normally they'd have an inch and a half left over. I'm going to allow them to extend their line like so. They are now... Uh, they've got 3 fatigue marker. But look at that. They have got the Broman's... In a pincher movement. There's a lot of motion in this game. A lot of sweeping action. It's what I like about Chainmail. It is now time for the orcs to go. And we're going to have... The big guy is going to huck a boulder at the elves. And since he's not moving, he's not going to get in melee. We're going to leave it like that. The, uh, the heavy foot here can charge... A total of, let's double check, heavy foot charge, six inches. They are in range of these elves, so that charge is going to cost them a fourth fatigue marker. And remember, there are only 11 of them left. So there's, oh, fatigue marker, not, not wound, not yet anyway. And the elves haven't moved, so that's all of our contact. The... The big guy here, oh, wait a minute, the big guy here now, oh, you know what, we can't, we, we're not going to bring these guys up after all. These guys are going to stay back, because we want the big guy to chuck his boulder. We're going to take that, take that away, and uh, it, it's going to mean taking three more casualties, but he may be able to wipe these elves out, if we can make a pretty good prediction. And not only that, but by just holding still and not meleeing, those heavy foot are going to be rest and refreshed for their sprint around the right flank of their of their opponents. So we're done with all of the movement. We have to do melee and missile fire. We're going to shoot three more arrows. That's going to be one, two, three. They are down to eight, which means they're just hanging on. And they may wind up charging next turn, depending on what happens here. Our big boy, Murray Mack, is now going to huck a boulder at the elves. For the missile phase, we're going to do these archers first. Since they didn't move, they get a second shot at these guys. And that second shot is going to do three more casualties. And that's going to be enough to take them off the board. They have been eliminated as a unit. But the elves now have to deal with this big boy. Now, a light catapult has a range of up to 10 inches in this case. And you have to say, well, I think we're going to throw the boulder a total of... Eight inches forward and one inch that way. And then you measure that eight inches and the one inch. 
And that's where you think the boulder is going to land. So eight inches goes there, and one inch means it lands directly on these guys. Every figure underneath that point, and it's it's got a range, it's got a a blast template, if you will, of I'm gonna double check them rules just in case. The catapult has a hit area of hey, two inches. There it is in, in fuzzy black and white. There it is in black and white. So he is classed as a light catapult, except he's got a range of 20 inches. And the hit area is, cut that in half, because we're playing half scale, hit area of one inch. So everybody within one inch of this thing, and wait a minute, one inch of real inches, means that it's going to include, basically half this unit gets hit, except... We also have to roll our over-under. So the red is over, the green is under. He winds up shooting four inches short, and that boulder is going to land somewhere about right here. No damage. All right. We could also roll an over-under for the left-right. Are we supposed to do that? I don't think we are. It's just the, the over-under for direction. Let's, let's try it. Left is red. So it would have gone two inches left. See, this is, well, it would have gone, it would have landed like right about here if we did that. So we're good. We're done. The elves, uh, you know, managed to avoid that first chuck boulder. Now we've got a melee we got to conduct. This gets a little bit complicated because we've got multiple units and Gary doesn't give us a whole lot of, of advice on what to do here. Well, it, at, at least on the part of the, the orcs, it's going to be fairly simple. Because we've got 10 dice that we, we need to roll. Well, let's let's double check. You've got six heavy horse contacting six heavy horse. That means it's going to be one-on-one -on -one sixes to wound. They get one wound on the Broman Empire. Then they've got four dice. Well, they've got four in contact with the heavy foot. Heavy horse. Ah, you know what we got to do, though. Did they stick around for the charge? With a seven, when they are charged by... They have, like, a counter charge. Because they were being contacted, they could charge into the guy. They get a bonus on this score. The... the You add one to this... You add two to the score because both are charging. And that means uh, on a 2d6 plus two, they need to roll a... A three or better. Yeah, they did. So there's nobody running away from the charge on this one. All right, so the combat that we did here is legit. Now we've got to roll four dice. Well, I keep saying that. We've got four heavy horse in contact with heavy foot. You get to roll three dice per contact. So we actually have 12 dice altogether that we're going to roll to see how much damage we do to these footmen. And we're hitting on... What did I say? Five up? Heavy horse on heavy foot. Yep, so that's going to be a total of one, two, three hits on these guys over here. That means they did a total of four hits against the enemy. Did I miss any? I did not. All right, that's our 12. Now we have to figure out how many hits the orcs take. You've got four pikemen in contact, but they can fight two rows deep. So we've got eight guys fighting heavy horse. And heavy foot against heavy horse, you only get one die for every four guys. Okay, so our eight becomes two dice hitting on sixes. And they scored no hits. But you do have two, four, six heavy horse engaged with the heavy horse. And that means it's going to be hitting on sixes. So they only did one damage altogether. These, these pikemen are not helping. They should have stayed back. Because the orcs have now won this fight handily. Maybe. We need to tally up some scores here, don't we? Ah, uh, but now when we work out the morale, this is where having the pikemen in contact helps. Because the total morale score for the bromans is going to be 171. That's 19 times 9 for the surviving heavy horse. But then you have to add 65 points because the heavy foot, they've got a score of 5 per surviving 13. So add 65. And then because they of these extra 13 guys, 
you add 13 to that score for a grand total of, well, be, hang on to that thought, because the base score for the Orcish Heavy Horse is 171. So as far as the morale score is concerned, this is a wash. The Bromans have a total bonus of 65 for the foot, plus 13 because they got an extra 13 warm bodies in there. So the heavy, so the Bromans actually win by 78, despite the fact that they lost the melee. Well, wait a minute, because remember that the Orcs get a bonus of, they did an extra three casualties, roll a d6 times three, so they get a bonus of nine, so that 78 gets dropped down to 67 is the differential. Ah, but there were 20 people so involved, so this now, you have to double that score because it's classed as a small melee, and suddenly our heavy horse are in trouble because they have to, with a differential of uh, 140, they route one and a half moves. That's going to be nine inches. Backs to the enemy must rally. So they boogie on out. And just like that, the battle gets a lot more interesting. That leaves the battlefield looking a little something like this. Well, we're not quite caught up yet because remember that these guys fought a melee. These guys fought a melee. These guys fought a melee. Everybody fights a melee. Our heavy horse used all of their movement getting into contact. Remember, they, they spread out a little bit. They moved six inches. That was all they had. These guys only moved one inch. So the human foot actually pursue further to try and catch these guys. They've moved a total of nine inches. Now they have to rally, which if they're not contacted on this turn, they will automatically do. Meanwhile, um, we're done. These guys are done moving. The archers are done moving. So things are heating up. Things are getting interesting here. We have to roll for initiative on the next turn. And as always, the green is the orcs, and the humans get to go first, which is unfortunate because it means that our heavy horse are going to be able to charge Big Murray. And that might just keep them out of contact of these heavy, of these light horse here. But before we do, we are going to fire off three arrows. Remember, he defends as armored foot. So the 12 archers are going to take a shot at Big Murray. And we said he is within seven and a half inches. That's a six inches there. So when you've got 12 guys, Murray defends as, uh, what do you call it? Defends as armored foot, though. So defending his armored foot, 12 archers is only going to be able to do... Well, we got to roll a d6. And on a 1 through 4, they'll do one wound. There you go. They did one wound. And that's not enough. Remember, he has no morale. So we'll just put one down there for now. Once it builds up too high, we'll, we'll, we'll knock it off. But that's it for their movement. Then these guys are going to follow up. They're going to race after these... Now, they can't charge. They're not within six inches, but they can move up the four and a half inches from here to here. That's about as close as they're going to be able to get on this turn. And, oh boy, now they're getting tired. Uh, so we give them another casualty marker. And these guys are absolutely going to charge old Murray. Um, that's six inches. They're going to be able to get to within seven, so they only have two inches of pursuit. And I, what what do we do here, right? We've got we've got a whole line of of horses charging at one giant. Does the giant roll twelve dice to the two for these guys? That doesn't seem right, does it? At any rate, we're done moving for the humans. These guys are not going to be contacted, so they will automatically rally. And we'll tighten them up just to show that they have rally. Meanwhile, the horses back here, the wolves, who have successfully pulled off that flanking maneuver, we can send them around to deal with these guys. And that might be the smart play to take out these elves. Because if they go straight at these guys, maybe swing around this way. Now, they can't go after the foot because the hill is in the way. They don't, well, they, the center to center, they do have line of sight. I think maybe that's the smart play. And they've got a charge range of 15 inches. So let's do that. That's going to be six. 
and then um, two inches to do that. And then, so they are just barely going to be able to make contact with these guys. Light horse on light infantry. And they've, they've charged them in the rear, which means... Oh, these guys probably should have just turned around uh, to face that. Which means the light foot is not going to get a counterattack on this one. Well, this may be the end of them. Let's do that first. There's only four guys in contact. And uh, do they stand? Do they withstand the charge? For the guys that are hitting them in the in the rear, with a nine, they do. You only need like uh, I don't know, I can look it up, but uh, armored foot, heavy foot, only need a seven. Um, does, is there anything about uh, if you get charged? Uh, if charged to the rear, deduct two. So nine minus two is seven. Oh, there you go. And uh, blah, 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 blah. both of you are charging. There we go. So that's it. They withstand the charge. But we've got a total of four attacks. No retaliation. Light horse against armored foot. No, heavy foot. Excuse me. Heavy foot. Uh, and that means light horse, heavy foot. Oh, two dice per. Hitting on sixes. So there's your die roll. They get one casualty. That removes... A stand. And that puts them at the 25% mark. But heavy foot do not test morale until they reach a third. So you're going to have to do better than that. However, that does count as a melee. So the heavy horse, the light horse, are now exhausted. They will fight as one rank lower. The light foot are also tired. And now we have to figure out what we're going to do here. You've got a total of 19... Oh, that should be 19. They took a casualty. you got 19 horses fighting one giant. We know the giant is going to get to roll 12 dice. And we know he attacks as heavy foot. Oh, plus an extra die. Well, that's great. So heavy foot against heavy knights, heavy horse, is going to be two dice. Oh. Oh, it just says 12... Hitting on fives. So he rolls 12 dice, hitting on fives. He's going to be able to swing his club. And there's our first eight. Now he gets to roll in another four, plus one more because it's melee. Hitting on fives. So he does a total of four casualties. We're just going to remove a base. And just like that, those heavy knights are not doing so hot. They... Um, get to retaliate, and what do we do? Do we roll two dice? Now, he defends as armored foot. Oh, he melees his heavy foot, which means... Let's see, heavy foot going up against heavy horse. Uh, he's the attack... The giant... Oh, I did that wrong. He gets one per four. Well, see, this, this is where the, the verbiage gets a little awkward. He fights as heavy foot... Let's read it. Let's figure it out together, team. Giants melee as 12 foot with an extra die for their oversized weapons. Yes, we did that wrong. You treat them as 12 heavy foot. In heavy foot attacking heavy horse, you get one die per four guys. So we should only roll three dice plus the extra. So there you go. He actually gets a total of one hit. On that heavy horse. Where'd you go, heavy horse? There we go. I'm going to put you back down. Ah, you know what that does, though? That means we're going to remove... No. That means we're going to add a casualty. So they're down to just 18 heavy horse. And oh my goodness, they're uh, involved in a melee. I think that means... The last turn they charged melee. Charge melee. So they're up to four now. But they get to roll. What do you think? Do we roll two dice? Because there's only two of them in contact. Man, I don't know about that. I think we do. Heavy Horse. There's only two guys in contact. Heavy Horse attacking Armored Foot. Defend as Armored Foot. You actually get two dice per dude. Rolling four dice, hitting on fives. And we get one more hit. So how do you do morale in a case like this? He never checks morale. They tied their score... Which means these guys didn't lose morale. Which means now you have an ongoing fight. 
and you can wrap around like so. Yeah, the trees are in the way. Whatever. That, that's going to be what happens in the next turn. And we are done. These guys have 12. So how do you do this, right? How do you route away from these guys? There are, there are rules for that. Oh, by the way, these guys, because they attacked the foot in the rear, these wolves should have been attacking as medium cavalry. They forced the foot to retreat. So the foot are going to retreat. Oh, look at that. Three inches. They're going to get stuck in a pincher movement. The Oh, how, many, how much? Two inches? Did these guys have two inches? I think they did. These wolves had two inches of movement left. Uh, oh, but they are exhausted now. So contacted in the rear. They are going to fight as, uh, you know, they're going to fight as, uh, you know, bump them up one but lose one for the, for the weariness. They're going to fight as light horse. We're going to have a total of four attacks. We've got four contacts. And these guys, did they rally? Oh, they were rallying this turn, which means we have to roll a die. And on a one or a two, yeah, they successfully rallied when they get caught by these old boys. Now, they are caught in the rear, which means they will fight as one class lower. And they don't, oh, you know what, they're also caught in the rear, so they don't get to do any casualties back to these guys. So what you're going to see is a total of four heavy foot attacking these, well, these are going to be armored foot now, attacking... Heavy horse, an armored foot attacking heavy horse. It's a one-to-one. -one. We're going to roll a total of four dice. No, eight dice because of the pikes. Hitting on sixes. And they do a total of two casualties to this heavy foot. Ah, this gets complicated. Real complicated. Um, one of the things I want to do, because this doesn't look very good, I'm going to put I'm going to put the yellow gems down. This will clean up our battlefield a little bit. You guys are exhausted, and you guys are exhausted. So we're going to put a couple of yellow gems down to represent the exhaustion. All right, so we did two casualties over here. And then the now medium horse are going to get to roll against the... Oh, no, it's their light horse still, right? But light horse on heavy foot still allows you to roll two dice per. So it's going to be four dice hitting on sixes. And we get one casualty. So it's there's no bonus for the... The casualties, which is all right for the orcs, because the orcs still outnumber these guys by, like, a lot. Since they don't have anywhere to retreat to, right, there's, uh, and that, these guys need an instability due to, no, they don't. They, they haven't lost enough troops yet. But we're going to pull them off the board because they have nowhere to retreat to. They are going to get hammered by the fact that, that they're giving up four points for every extra guy here. So they're, they're just done. And that's going to be it for... Now that does count as a melee. So these heavy horse pick up another exhaustion marker. But they have successfully eliminated the last of the human foot. And we get to move on to the next turn. I've already moved these guys because that's what they're going to do. Uh, and as you can see, we got a five versus a three. The orcs get to move first, and they're going to leave these guys as is. They have rallied. Uh, the exhausted... Hey, when you're already exhausted, why not? We're going to go ahead and pivot 90 degrees. Oh, you can only charge to your front, though. So these guys are going to pivot, and they're going to have to wait one more turn before they can charge. But we might as well, for quarter move... And then move away. We're going to move them something like that. And they have moved. There's their casualty. Uh, these guys are not moving. They're going to wait until... Well, no, we're going to... We're going to... We're going to about face. And that counts as a move. So it's going to take them another couple of turns to get involved in this game. Uh, the elves now... Hmm... Well, it's going to be great if these elves are the last ones that, that, that survive this, isn't it? Uh, that's it for movement. As I said, the Bromans are going to come around like so. And I don't know, does this, does this guy even need fatigue markers? Because he fights, I guess if he gets exhausted, he would have two. I think I pulled them off him. 
Oh, right. So he only got one for the last turn. That's the fatigue for our friendly neighborhood giant. And now he's in trouble. Now he does get to, he fights as armored foot. And no, it was, he melees as 12 heavy foot. Going up against heavy horse, he's only going to get to roll three dice, plus the bonus, hitting on sixes. So he gets no hits. But now he's got to deal with the fact that he's facing six heavy horse. He defends his armor. They get two dice. So they're going to roll 12 dice, and they're hitting on fives. Here's all our 12 dice, hitting on fives and sixes. And we got one, two, three more hits on him. So now I think we're, we're getting clustered up enough. We're going to go ahead and break out the D12. So he is sitting on five wounds. And there's your five wounds for the Friendly Neighborhood Giant. The result of that is going to be, well, if he fights his 12 heavy foot, then his morale is going to be hmm, five heavy foot. Have a morale score of, well, do we call it seven heavy foot? Now we'll call it 12. 12 heavy foot. He's got a base score of 60. And the heavy horse have a base score, there's 18 of them, of 90 plus another 56, 146. Uh, but, you know, it, it, he, he, he never makes a morale check, but this is not a morale check. This is morale, you know, post-melee morale, right? Double in the difference, you know, add the difference in surviving figures. That giant is kind of, I don't think it applies here. I think if he loses... Um, melee, he just continues to fight because he's not scared. And I think we're done with the turn. I think we move on to the next turn. And uh, the bromans get the initiative. So we will bring these guys around to here. That's really about the best we can do. Uh, you know, they're going to move, but they're just, the stream is incrossable. So they're just going to wait and see what happens. And then the question is, what do you do with these guys? We're just going to leave them there. They're going to rest. They're going to recover so that they can, in the next turn, pile in. Old Murray the Giant's probably like, hey, what, what are we doing here, guys? What, what are we doing? He's going to roll his five dice, hitting on sixes. And he's going to do no casualties. Oh, these guys are now exhausted. So they're fighting as medium horse. And medium horse against armored foot... Roll two dice per contact, and they can get one more unit around behind him. Swooping in the flanks there. This is He's taken five so far. So now they're going to get eight dice. Hitting on sixes. Two, four, six, eight. Eight dice hitting on sixes. See if they can add to the tally, and they don't. So old Murray the Giant is still sitting on five wounds. Uh, two, four, six, eight, nine. I even rolled an extra one and they still couldn't get it. Because when you fight as medium horse, you are in trouble. Medium horse against armored foot. You roll two dice per. Oh, they actually have eight more dice coming to them. So we'll undercount by one. We rolled one too many. We're going to roll one too few. So they actually do get two more hits on Murray before the next turn rolls around. And there's fours. Who gets to go first? The Bromans, but they don't have any movement. The Archers can't get into the action unless they want to race around, which they don't. Not looking good for the Bromans. They only have a range of seven and a half inches. They can't get to these guys, who, of course, are now going to charge into the flanks of this heavy horse. So now we have another little cluster of a melee because these heavy horse are going to charge in as well. And the heavy horse, being charged by heavy horse, are going to have to make a uh, stand your ground roll. And when you're charged in the flank, you have to uh, deduct two from that score. So that score of three means the heavy horse are going to break and run one and a half moves, and they have to rally. So that would bring them back to here. And I think we're going to call the game right there, because the... Sorry for the bump there. The forces of the orcs now have a huge superiority in numbers. 
The Giant is still capable of chucking boulders. Since these guys are gone, the Giant doesn't have to move. He can chuck a boulder at these guys, and he can just stand off at a distance. And I think that is... That's good. I think I'm comfortable calling the game right here. Um, on the next turn, even if these heavy knights rally, these guys are going to be able to wheel around, and they're just going to set up, and they're just going to overwhelm them. Uh, I think the fact that the light horse were able to chase off all of the foot without really suffering any casualties on their own was a big difference in this game. And uh, once again, we see how much ebb and flow there can be in a rank-and-flank game when you just read the manual and play the game as Gygax intended. Valuable lesson there for anybody playing one of Gygax's creations. Until next time, I'm praying for you.